Before we jump into the podcast, we are looking to add a podcast growth manager to our team. So if you're a fan of the podcast and you have a skill set that you think would help us grow the podcast and reach a larger audience, please send us your information to team, T-E-A-M, at betterpickleball.com. Hello and welcome to Pickleball Therapy, the podcast dedicated to your pickleball improvement. It's the podcast with you in mind. We are on site this week. We are in Dallas. We just spent uh, a few days at Nationals. It was awesome. I'll tell you a little bit more about that in the riff, give you some thoughts on Nationals. And we're in Dallas for our camps. We had two camp, or one camp yesterday, two days, and one camp started tomorrow. Today's our day off. So you're going to hear a little bit of background noise and maybe a motorcycle or two goes by as I'm out here recording the podcast. Apologies for any kind of disturbances in the sound, but I can guarantee you this. The content from this podcast is going to help you as you continue to play your best pickleball. As you jump into the podcast, I want to remind you that we have a Black Friday uh, course bundle coming up. Make sure that you take a look for that. Take a look. <laughs> be on the lookout for that. If you're on our email list, you'll get notified of it. It's going to be really good. Uh, two courses, 90 minutes each. Uh, one is, is on optimizing basically doubles partner play because we don't play doubles, pickleball doubles alone. And playing together is really going to radically improve your game. And the second course, the 90-minute course, has to do with turning the lens inward, if you will. And we're going to look into how we can reduce our own force errors. Because if you can reduce your own force errors, as you probably know by now, you're going to play better and probably win a lot more games. All right, let's jump into the uh, substance of today's podcast. And I've been thinking a lot about this subject, which is the subject about struggle. Right. But, you know, players struggling and it's it's, it, you know, struggle is is going to happen right? when you're if you're trying to improve, if you're out there, even if you're not trying to improve, you're going to struggle as a pickleball player. There's going to be moments where you're out there on the court and you're wondering to yourself, what in the world is going on? Why am I struggling so much? But I wanted to give you an alternative to struggling because I think you'll find it interesting. And then at the end, I'm going to give you another rest. We're going to go with three S's today. So struggle is what happens to us whenever we are trying to grow in anything and in pickleball in this case and whenever we're trying to learn something new whether it's a new shot whether it's a new understanding a deeper understanding of the game whether it's trying to solve what do i do in this situation uh anything like that it's going to involve struggle there's a saying that i've always liked that the struggle is real and in pickleball the struggle is definitely real but i want to give you an alternative to struggle and the alternative to struggle is stagnation. Now, stagnation is basically not advancing, right? It's, it's staying where you're at now and becoming stagnant in the game. To be clear, there's no criticism of any player who wants just to stay where you're at. And that's perfectly fine. There's no criticism of you. If you're enjoying pickleball and you're getting the most out of it and having a great time, by all means, please continue doing that. If you're, if you're not satisfied with where you're at in the game, and what I mean by that is not satisfied meaning that, you're, um, that you're, you're not enjoying the current moment. What I mean by that is that you know that there's more. You know that there is a bigger bigger view of the game, uh, there's a, that you can go deeper with your relationship with Pickleball, and you want that. Then stagnation is probably not what you want. All right? So you're not looking to stagnate as a Pickleball player. And if you're not looking to stagnate as a pickleball player, then struggle will be a part of your process. It'll be a part of your existence and your relationship with pickleball. And what I hope you take away from this piece of the, of the podcast today is that the, op, the, the only other option to struggle is stagnation. And if you don't want to stagnate as a player, you in turn have to embrace, there's one of those motorcycles, you then have to, you in turn have to embrace struggle. You have to understand that struggle is going to come with the process that you're following, with what you're trying to accomplish. And when you accept that struggle is part of it, you embrace it as part of your process, you're going to feel much better about the process itself. You're not going to fight the struggle. You're going to say, hey, I know I'm struggling right now, but I know that the only other alternative is stagnation. And so I'm going to accept the struggle, I'm going to embrace the struggle, and I'm going to work through the struggle to keep on going forward, which is what I want, your name, right? I want as a pickleball player. 
Now, I'm going to give you another S that I think will round everything out nicely for you. And it's this. If you struggle, right? If you stick with it, right? If you, if you, if you stay with the struggle and keep working through it, at the end of that, you're going to find success. Now, success is not a finish line in pickleball, right? Like life. I mean, in most of life, success is not defined by like a, a, a finite thing, right? Or a moment that success means. Success in this context means that you're going to have worked through the struggle and have achieved the area that you're currently, that you have been struggling and that you've been working on. And let's talk about one specific area. So let's talk about, for example, I'm having trouble controlling my shots, right? I'm having trouble, you know, controlling where my shots go. And let's take a particular shot. Let's just say a backhand, right? Because backhands, players sometimes struggle with their backhand. So I'm, I'm having trouble with my backhand. So I have two choices. I can stagnate, meaning keep it the way it is. And again, no criticism. That's fine. If you, that's what you want, no problem. But if you don't want that, if you want something else for your backhand, then you're going to choose to struggle. You're going to choose to work on your backhand. You're going to choose to make a lot of mistakes. You're going to choose to, you know, understand how to hit the backhand better, work on your backhand. If you have time and energy to do it, you're going to drill on your backhand. That's struggle. So you're going to struggle with your backhand. And then at some point in the future, I can't tell you if it's a month from now, six months from now, or three days from now, you will find success in terms of your backhand being better than it was. You're going to be further along the path on your backhand. That's the success that comes from struggle. And the, 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 the opposite is also true. There, you won't find success through stagnation. You won't find the success, at least not the way we've defined it, if you stagnate in your game. So all that said, if you want improvement, if you want further growth in your game, if you want a deeper relationship with pickleball than you currently have, be prepared for the struggle, know it's coming, and embrace it. Say, struggle, let's go, let's party. I'm going to get through you because at the other side of struggle is success. All right, let's talk a little bit about nationals. We had a great time at nationals uh, this year. Uh, uh, CJ was able to come down to nationals. Several members of the team. We had uh, Kyleen was there. Terry was there. Miner's there. And Emily was there. Uh, Christy uh, Largent, the MC of the Pickleball Summit, joined us uh, at, during, the nas during nationals. She's actually from here in Dallas. So it was awesome to be here at Nationals with the team. Uh, we had several uh, TPS members were able to come out and join us. Uh, I'm not going to name names because then I'll, I'll, I'll forget some of the names and then I don't want everybody to feel, feel like I left you out. I, I know you came. I saw you. I shook your hand. It's awesome to have you uh, come out to Nationals and to support, uh, support me while I was playing and to support our team and what we're doing uh, in Pickleball. Um, I felt like Nationals was a fantastic event. I read a lot online before I went out, uh, a lot of you know concerns about uh, courts and, and bathrooms in particular and draw sizes. I did see that some of the draws ended pretty late, like at one o'clock in the morning. I would say that at a Nationals event, um, that's okay, simply because of the, the, the size of the event, right? The, 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 the magnitude of what's happening, I think it's okay to go late on a, on a few events. Um, I do, I was concerned about the golden ticket, so I don't want to downplay that. I know, you know, many players, uh, chased golden tickets, right? Because that was the rules of getting into nationals, uh, at the beginning of the year. And then when it was decided that golden tickets were no longer required, I can understand how you would be upset if you had, if you had gone through the trouble of traveling to different tournaments to get the golden ticket, you'd gotten the golden ticket and then found out it wasn't necessary. So I'm not trying to. Uh, minimize that. But that said, in terms of the event itself, uh, I felt the event was was very successful. I can tell you the draws that I played in, the matches were called really efficiently, like fast. Like it was like you were done. Usually I expect when you when you're in the in the winner's bracket and then you go to the what they call the opportunity bracket, right? Or the or the come around bracket, um, that you're gonna have to wait a while. That was not the case at Nationals. Uh, the only time that I had to wait for a match was when one of our matches, the opponents had withdrawn. So obviously there was nobody for us to play. So we just waited that period. We would have played that match. Um, so I thought that was really good. 
you know, there was the courts were a little bit tight, but again, it's a big event. There's, you know, I mean, we don't have magic facilities that we can just, you know, pull out of the air to hold an event this size. So I thought within the scope of of the size of the event, I thought it was very well managed in terms of the facilities. Um, and, you know, the only knock would be the bathrooms. I would agree that the bathrooms were not ideal. Um, you know, at an event of this magnitude, having better bathrooms would have been better. Now, all that said, that's the kind of the, the peripheral stuff. I will tell you this, the energy at Nationals was awesome. Watching all the players out there competing and giving their best, uh, the energy of the crowds at the matches, the noise, the music. I mean, it was just, it was a ton of fun. If you ever have an opportunity to go to one of the major tournaments like Nationals, uh, the U.S. Open, I think, is a really nice tournament as well. I don't know that the pros will be at the U.S. Open next year uh, by pros. There'll be pros there. I just don't know whether like, you know, Ben Johns, Annalie Waters, uh, Catherine Parenta, players like J.W. Johnson, players like that, Colin Johns will be at nationals uh, simply because, um, you know, politics, I guess, you know, uh, pickleball politics. Uh, but it's still an amazing event if you're in the Florida area and, and can make it to the U.S. Open, the energy, the number of players there. I wanted to clip this into the podcast because when I listened to the podcast, I realized that I had not thanked the tournament organizers, referees, volunteers, and everybody who makes it possible for us to have the tournament. It's always important to remember that whenever we're able to play pickleball, whether it's at a tournament or on local courts, that there are folks who are behind the scenes who made it possible for us to be able to enjoy this awesome sport. Without volunteers, referees, tournament organizers, and everybody else that goes into that process, I and my fellow competitors would not have been able to compete at the USA Pickleball National Event. So thank you, everybody. We really appreciate it. There is one area of the game that I'm going to be addressing in a blog in the not-too-distant future, or in an article, and I'll probably cover it in a podcast as well, I'm thinking. And it has to do with um, enjoying the actual experience, enjoying the actual competition. Um, I was a little bit disappointed in uh, my fellow senior pro players uh, in terms of their what I perceived, and maybe I'm wrong and they can correct me, but, um, and I'm friends with, with the vast majority of them, but I would say all of them, but, um, is the, the sense I got was that they were unhappy when they were playing, they were stressed out. You know, they were, the, the, the looks on their faces looked like they were not having a good time. And the question I asked myself that I'm going to explore in, in a future, uh, piece of content is, um, why play the tournament? You know, if you're not going to enjoy the experience of the tournament, why play the tournament? You know, we're all grown adults. You know, do we really need the medal potentially at the end of this event? Is that why we play the event? If it is, you know, I think it's it's unfortunate because I think there's so much more. Um, I can tell you that, uh, you know, the, the, in the brackets that I played, I played in men's doubles and in mixed doubles, both what they call blind dates. So players whom I had never played with before the tournament. And uh, we were able to uh, go two and two, so two wins and two losses. I find that to be a very satisfying experience. I got to, we got to have great matches against some awesome competitors, uh, some of the best players in the world, and to compete, to go out there and, and have some really nice rallies, uh, you know, some better than others, but overall, you know, an amazing experience. And, uh, and also to be able to see a lot of players who, um, you know, I don't get to see because we're spread out all over the country. I always tell uh, folks who ask me about my tournament experience, for me, a tournament is like the best open play that I can think of because I get to see a, a lot of players and friends who um, I don't get to see on a regular basis. So it's, it's my open play. Anyway. Um, so that, those are my thoughts on, on nationals, a, a, a tremendously awesome event. Uh, again, thanks to our team and to all of the, uh, TPS community and, and other folks who know us from our, our YouTube channels and things like that always come up to us and thank us for the content and, and let us know that we're making an impact on their pickleball. Because as you, as you may know, even though I love competing, I love going out there and playing and giving my all on the court. That is not my passion in pickleball. My passion in pickleball is providing content just like I do in this podcast to try and help players like you enjoy the game a little bit more. All right, that's this week's podcast. I hope you enjoyed it. As always, please consider rating and reviewing it and share with your friends. If you enjoyed the podcast, they probably will too. I hope you have a great week and I'll see you next time.